Well, hello and welcome to Meadow Farm Cottages, where today we are out filming a match masterclass on, you know, one of my favourite ways of fishing, but certainly one that is forgotten an awful lot. And people perhaps don't use it enough. That is the traditional waggler. It's a really enjoyable way of catching fish, and we've managed to hook one on the first cast. So, what I'm going to do today is hopefully explain when it's good and how to get the most out of it. And it may just give you that little bit of inspiration in certain times of the year to go out and give it a go. But let's concentrate on getting this one in. We'll have an early fish to show you and then we'll get into the session. There we go. What a cool way to start the session. That's why, to be honest with you, I picked this venue because when the float goes under, you never quite know what you're going to catch. And now I've got a real slippery character here of a tench. That is wicked. I've got no worries in saying that they are one of my favourite fish to catch. And yeah, we're going to catch some small carp, maybe some big ones. Tench, I had a real mixed bag today. And that is perfect for having an enjoyable waggler session. So let's get this one slipped in the net and we'll start off with the tackle that you're going to need to fish a waggler effectively. Well, a few more of those, please. I love the fact that on a mixed fish, when the float goes under, you've not got a clue what it's going to be. And that's when the waggler for me is at its most enjoyable. So let's talk about, first of all, when you use it, and second of all, the tackle you need to make it the most effective. So when you use it, it days exactly like we've got today. So we're in spring, we're not right into the summer, catching massive weights of big carp. So it's in and out with sunshine and fishing a pole over the top of your swim will cast a shadow and they can definitely back off of that sometimes. And also they go out of say the 16 meter limit. So a waggler allows you to fish a little bit further. So that's when I think it really comes into its own and you can put some weights together on the waggler and have some fun with it. So secondly, the tackle you need to make it most effective is first of all, a 13 foot waggler that's nice and lightweight is crucial. Being 13 foot will make it so much easier to cast these light wagglers to your spot and it picks the line up really quick on the strike. So a nice lightweight rod, I use the EFOS XRW in 13 foot. Now let me put it out there straight away, you don't have to spend a lot of money but as long as it's nice and lightweight and 13 foot because you're holding it for most of the day. And then we couple that up with an Acros Ultra 4000 reel. Again, the main thing here is it's nice and light. You want yourself to have fun, you want to be comfortable, so a light reel is going to let you achieve that more often. And now, finally, with hardware, a nice thin diameter mainline. This is four pound on here, and again, light wagglers, if it wind picks up a little bit, it lets you cut through the wind, and it just makes your presentation a lot better. So, that's what you need. I won't go more into it. Try not to bore you with tackle. It's not a selling fest at all. That just gives you information that should make your fishing a little bit more enjoyable and a little bit more effective. So there we go. We're going to flick out to the spot. 13 foot rod, light line, makes it nice and easy. We sink the line and we can feed some bait. So that's the tackle bit out of the way. I'm going to fish on now, try and catch a few fish, and then we'll get more into the session. We'll talk to you about the rigs, and how we fish effectively to try and get the most out of your session. There we go, that was a wicked little section catch of fish. We've had tench, eyed a little carp. Don't know what's coming next, but I need to stop fishing and give you some technical information. Now for me, this is the most important bit coming up and the thing that people getting into float fishing get wrong the most. So if you're gonna to listen to anything, the next few minutes are probably the most important. And I'm gonna try and explain it without waffling and going in too much detail so it's hard to understand. But we're gonna rewind now. So when you're fishing, most of the time you're gonna plumb the depth. And as you've seen now, I've plumbed it nicely at the start of the session, but my float is weighted like this. So at the top of my fingers here, there's a little bit of bristle showing, and that's so my bite indication is really, really good. But all of my weight for my float, or most of it, is right here at the float end. So if I was to now fish, what I'll do is I'll whack this a couple of foot too deep. If I was to now cast this out, it would still sit 
like that because all the shot is pretty much at my float and you've just seen I've moved it about a foot and a half too deep so if you were fishing three foot over depth let's say you wouldn't really know because your float would still be sitting perfectly it looks like it's absolutely spot on but one of the reasons why I use these floats and we will come on to the rig later is because that on there is a two gram or one and a half gram float whatever I tend to use in a day and we can quickly change that to a great big horrible looking three or four gram float so now this float is way too buoyant for the shot i've got on the rig if i cast it out it's over depth it's going to be sitting something like this it's going to be a big sail pretty much and now that will allow me to see that i'm fishing far too deep which i wouldn't be able to see with the other rig so i'll try and put it into practice and one of the other things to mention is the plummet to use is a really nice light plummet this is a 10 gram plummet it needs to be light enough so if i cast out it's going to basically lead my rig it's not going to spin around the big mess and the float get tangled so a nice light plummet and now if we cast to the spot hopefully we're not going to ruin too much fishing here we know it's over depth and hopefully you can see that on the camera it's a bit of a ripple but that is like a massive sail because the float is far far too big for the shot on the rig i can clearly tell that that is over depth okay so if i now wind this in and i know hopefully if i move it back to about a foot we should be relatively back to where we were so let's put this back down a little bit and we'll try that again so this should be pretty close i would say so again if we flick to the spot there we go and that now if we let that cut there we go so it's now come up and as you can see there's now only just the bristle showing so we know that, that float was really boring it's trying to come up it's trying to come up the plummet is what's stopping it sitting up there like a sail so i would say at the moment that is about an inch or two over depth maybe so it's about spot on now i'm not saying you have to fish in the bottom but knowing where it is is ultra ultra important so that now for me i want to fish about an inch or two over depth so that is pretty perfect and that is going to be exactly where it stays so all we do whip off that float we whip back on the original float and we know we're back to where we were at the start of the session so hopefully that is how to plumb up in a bit of detail i haven't waffled too much or said anything you don't understand but it is really important to get right i see so many people shot the float perfectly at the start of the session then you go and start fishing and you don't know how far over depth you're fishing obviously if you're you know if you're not on the bottom and you're not deep enough your float is going to be pulled under by the plummet so you know at least you're on the bottom but the way we show you there is really good for getting it absolutely spot on so hopefully i haven't killed my swim there by recasting the plummet into it I'm going to fish away now for a couple of minutes, try and catch another one, and then we'll have a closer look at the rig itself. I'm glad that plummet didn't make any difference literally the first cast and another fish it seems that we're on a little nest of tench but I'm not complaining about that because they are my favorite fish I'm sure I said that earlier if I didn't then I've just repeated myself again but let's talk about the rig itself now now I have changed my waggler up probably four or five times throughout the last few years and I think I'm finally now happy with this setup so let's go through it now the float I've already explained pretty much the main reason why because I can quickly whip that off there and put the bigger float on for plumbing up but it's also really good it's got a double sight indicator basically so if i get a lift bite we've got some changing colors from orange black and, and yellow as well so really good for biting detection and that's pretty much why i use these floats solely for all of my fishing now i haven't attached that with a wagger adapter i've put it straight onto the line really because we've pretty much got the perfect waggler day today it's not very windy and i know i'm not gonna have to change the style of the float if you want to be extra safe you could attach it to your line with a li little silicon float adapter but there's no need for that today and i use these floats probably 95 percent of situations one other thing i've changed i used to just here either side of my float attach it with float adapters 
absolutely nothing wrong with that but i now use little stops or cube weights they're really easy to slide up and down the line absolutely no line damage so don't worry about that and it allows me to have all of or most of my weight right here at the float so casting it out is nice and straight it's not wobbling all over the place and it alleviates tangles so that's why i've gone with that and i think i'm now finally happy with this rig then the only other shot i do have down my line i have three number 10s as droppers and they are evenly spaced out throughout the rig because the way you're feeding your your waggler you have to pretty much feed it with a catapult so you've got a steady fall of bait coming through your swim what those shots spaced out in the line do is lay your rig out and slowly falls down as natural as you can make it so that's the only other shot i add to my rig i then have got a short six inch hook link and a size 14 hook and quite a thick wired hook personally in my opinion waggler fishing there is no room for small hooks with really thin wire one because you miss bites and two because you are putting a relatively big force through the strike you just pull out a fish as well so for me small hooks and fine wires have no place in waggler fishing go a bit more positive and you should find you connect with more fish so i'm pretty sure let's just flick that there now it's not gonna be too long before we get another bite that we haven't spoke them too much and i will quickly brush over bait i'm not going to go too much detail over it because i think it's personal to what everyone's fishing and your own favorites but for me today in a mixed fishery i'm feeding pellets and i've got maggots on the hook and i'm feeding a few of those as well if there's not too many silvers maggots are definitely the way forward i've got some expanders and we've got some corn as well so if we need to try and target a bigger fish we can do that and then all i'm doing is constantly not constantly because we don't want these fish to come up in the water but regularly we are feeding over the top of the float trying to get as much activity as we can into the swim and it is definitely worth a mention on feeding don't fish so far out that you can't feed any of these baits accurately basically you should fish as far as you can accurately feed maggots are a nightmare to feed normally so you need to try and make sure that you can feed them relatively accurately and that's as far as you should ever fish the waggler because if not it's just not neat enough and not worth it but we are going to sit here now i'm going to fish away for a little while catch a few more fish and then i've got a couple more tips to talk you through about how to get the best out of it if it's not absolutely perfect conditions like it is today one's certainly pulling back a little bit more and it just goes back to what we were saying earlier about getting yourself a real nice balanced setup so the real lightweight rod i've got some thin line on but strong enough if you just take your time make sure your clutch is set take your time and you can pretty much catch whatever you want really i mean this isn't going to be massive but it's going to probably be one of the new little carpenter like new little pennies i'm going to guess it's one of those unless it's a slightly bigger tench but yeah, certainly putting up a bit of a better account for itself. So what I'll do is I'll slowly coach this one in. We'll show you him and then we'll go on to a couple of tips to finish with. Yeah, he's one of those new little carp they're putting in. Not, oh, that's quite lucky. The hooks just popped out there. So not one of the biggest fish, but pop a bit more of a fight than those tension eyed that we've been catching. It's an angry little football. It's going to grow pretty big i'm sure one day but certainly proves that even if fish are putting up a bit of a better account for themselves just having a nice balanced tackle can certainly land fish a lot bigger than this one but there we go let's get this one in the net and crack on right okay so probably the last thing that i'll cover is and actually the weather's probably been quite kind this is a bit of a ripple on now is how to just present slightly better if you haven't got 
the perfect conditions. So, just pop a couple of maggots on there now. I always clip up, but I clip up quite a way past where I'm actually fishing, and then I'll wind back and try and make sure I sink that line. So it's a bit like feeder fishing in the way I'm casting. So I'm casting to a point on the far side, just nice and accurate, and I can't go any further than my line clips. So if I fire this out there now, like I said, it's nice and easy with a thin line. Once it's hit the surface, I had a quick two turns of reel handle and a little flick of the rod tip. You get used to doing that and it will sink most of the line. If you've got a little bit of flow, and I don't mind that because it keeps you in contact with the float. And then you may also know, it's just as I'm fishing away, I do pop my rod on a rest and my tip is just underneath the water. That is purely because it then keeps that line out of the ripple on the wind. So I can fish away now, knowing that within reason, unless it really, really blows hard, I'm gonna be fishing where I want to be fishing, where I've fed my bait all day, and it does make things nice and accurate. So I'll just do it again so you can try and picture as I was saying it there. And it is important to hit that clip because it kicks your rig out. So hopefully you can see it land nicely, but it lands all in a nice straight line, tight line, a couple of turns, and a flick. And now as I've tightened all that rig up, we're in perfect connection with it. So that's now gonna be swinging back towards me, just touch bottom, and it's all nice and tight. So your bite indication is gonna be really, really good. And then like I said, it's just nice and cut. Although when I'm now waiting for a bite, if I'm not feeding, oh, there we go, there's a bite straight away, nice. So when I'm feeding, that is on the rest, but my hand, as you probably saw there, is directly on the rod, purely because I'm there ready and waiting for a strike. There's no point in having your, your hands miles away and not being ready. Here we go, there's another little species. Look, a tiny little true crucian. And he is tiny, hopefully you can see on the camera, but there we go. Another species off the list, and one that is known for being pretty finicky when it comes to feeding. So it proves that what we're fishing here is pretty much as sensitive as you can possibly be. So he's popping the net. I'll pop a couple of maggots on. I'll repeat that process again for one last time so you could see it. And it just goes to prove here now, as you're fishing, you get yourself in a nice little rhythm. So I'm a far back marker. I'm hitting that spot, hits the line clip, two turns and a rod flick. It's quite repetitive as you keep hearing me say the same thing, but it means I'm fishing in the same spot and I can continue to fish there as long as the wind isn't ridiculous. So there we go, there's a few things to practice, put into your fishing. It will definitely make you more accurate. It'll definitely make me ready to hit more bites. We're on fire now, <laughs> they're really coming in thick and fast. And I think a few eyed and that have probably intercepted it. And it is quite important to try and, that's why I set my rig up in this fashion you know because all of my bait is getting fed through a catapult there's always bait falling through the swim and you'll find a lot of the time bites will come within you know let's say the first minute of your fishing this one's an eyed like i said you, you really don't know what is going to happen when that float goes under but yeah a lot of bites come within that first minute because your bait is acting the same as all of your other free offerings are. If you had a massive bulk of shot right down near the bottom, yes, it would get down there nice and quickly, but that bite and maybe the one before it took a little bit longer, wouldn't have come because you haven't got that nice slow fall. So there we go. That's plenty of information there for you. I mean, I think we've been pretty lucky that those two casts we've caught pretty quick but i'll let this one settle now hopefully there's another one not too far around the corner we'll have a few more fish and then we'll show you the end product
Well, I think we'll probably call this one the last fish. I'm not too sure what it is, but it's been a really, really enjoyable day. And I said at the start, I certainly don't do enough of it. And there is certainly a place for it in every match angler's armory. Certainly this time of year when it's still a little bit cold, but starting to warm up in the spring, I think definitely getting out of that pole line, not casting that shadow, is worth a real extra few fish. So we're gonna finish on another one of those perfectly formed little carp. So let's see if we can coach this one in and we'll have one last fish to show you at the end of the day. It'd be a nice one to end on. They don't half pull on this, uh, this light setup. You don't wanna to pull too high. You just wanna take your time and just slowly coach me. Here we go, this could be the time. There we go, one to finish on. Let's carefully bring them in. Probably one of the better ones today. They are so deceiving in how much they weigh because they're like, they're like little footballs. <laughs> really, um, look at that, that's an interesting carp, isn't it? Like, not don't see many like that, that kind of shape, and they'll probably grow pretty big in a few years time. But what we'll do is we'll get this one slipped in the net and we'll do a final send off and see what we've caught. So there we go, all the proof we need that not only me, but everyone should get out there and fish the waglet. What a day it's been, a huge mixed bag of fish. And that is gonna be it for us. So if there's anything else you'd like me to cover in a match masterclass, a particular method or venue, drop us a comment and let us know and we will try and get out and film it. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. But for us now, it's time to head off home and we will catch you again on the next one.